like to call this meeting to order. We'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. We'd like to welcome you to the Radnor Township School District Special Meeting of the Board to conduct committee work. Today is Tuesday, November 9th. Um, we will go right underway with any public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? This is just a reminder that the board shall provide an opportunity at the beginning of each special board meeting for eligible participants to comment on matters related to the agenda. The board requires that public participants be residents or taxpayers of the district, persons with a legal or contractual right to address the board, or persons recognized by the presiding officer as having a special interest such that addressing the board would be appropriate. Eligible participants will be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface their comments with an announcement of their name and address. <clears throat> Individual comments are, shall be limited to not more than four minutes as per board policy 006, meetings and public participation. The administration will follow up on general questions raised during public comment sometime after the meeting. Parents with questions specific to their own child's educational experience are encouraged to reach out directly to their child's teacher and or building principal. Should you be unable to attend this board meeting, you may submit your comment by email to boardcomments at rtsd.org or in writing to Mr. Michael Petiti, Reiner Township School District, 135 South Wayne Avenue, Wayne, PA, 19087. Do we have any public comment in the room? Do we have any emailed public comment? Okay, seeing no public comment, I'm at this time going to turn the agenda over to policy committee agenda items. Ms. Goldman. Good evening, everyone. We have a very brief policy, uh, very brief policy agenda to cover tonight. And we'll start with uh, the approval of the policy committee meeting minutes from October 12th, 2021. Has the policy committee to my left? Um, seen anything about the policy meeting minutes that you have a question about or concern? No? Okay. No. So those those will move along and that will move us into our one and only agenda item for this evening, which is policy 252, suicide prevention and self-harming behavior. I know that Mr. Regal is unable to join us. So Dr. Batchelor, are you filling in for Mr. Regal or how? Even, even to my better looking Mr. Yeah. Bechtold will. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Bechtold, yeah. welcome, okay. Uh, Come on up, you're the next contestant on the policy committee show. All right, thank you, Dr. Bachelor, for that illustrious uh, introduction. So, uh, policy 252, suicide prevention and self-harming behavior was recommended by administration uh, in order to more closely align with the content and the current practices that we have um, and this new policy uh, also dovetails with policy 236, which is uh, threat assessment that the school board approved uh, recently. Additionally, the policy was reviewed with our solicitor to ensure that we're in compliance with Act 71 requirements. It solidifies our procedures for conducting suicide risk assessments that have been pr uh, in practice for two years now in, uh, in the Ryder Township School District. This policy outlines professional development and training requirements that are required by the state as part of Act 71. So administration is recommending that the policy be brought forth to the full board at the uh, regular business meeting next, uh, next week for a second read. Okay, great, thank you. So it's been through po the policy committee. Once uh, policy committee, any follow-up questions before we move this on to the full board next week for second reading and adoption? Nope. nope. And Susan? No. Nope. Okay. Good. Thank you. Ms. Stern? Okay. Um, before we, I turn it back to you, I just want to also acknowledge Austin, who is, uh, has been serving faithfully on the policy committee and in some other school board capacities, but uh, we are, I think this, is this your official last meeting? You're in, officially in transition to off the committee next month? Yes, uh, next month I will be here with um, Sammy Rosen to transition her over into this position. Okay, well, Austin, as always, we really, really, really appreciate the input of our student representatives on these committees. 
and you've been a terrific policy, member of our policy team for the past year. So we will miss you, but we look forward to welcoming Sammy and you next month, and then I'm sure you will, she will follow in your great footsteps going forward. So thank you for serving on our committee. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Goldman. And now for the Finance Committee meeting agenda items, uh, I'm going to turn the agenda over to Mr. Moore as Chair of Finance. Mr. Moore, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Stern. Appreciate it. So the first Finance Committee agenda item we have is the approval of the Finance Committee meeting minutes from the October 12th, 2021 meeting. Uh, Mrs. Monahan, Mrs. Goldman, Mrs. Stern, any issue with the minutes? No, they were great. All right, those are approved. Under board action items, 4.02. Uh, Mr. Pauling, why don't you welcome and thank you for coming to your, I believe this is your first finance committee meeting? Yes, it is. All right, so we've, uh, Mr. Pauling has prepared a light agenda for us uh, for his first meeting. If you are able to walk us through the agenda items we have under 4.02, that would be appreciated. Yes, thank you. Um, so we have uh, for your presentation tonight, uh, the monthly financial reports for the month ended is September 2021. Uh, we have one contract for approval. It's an amendment to our Lakeside uh, agreement uh, that would be for a additional 0.4 counselor um, that would be paid for using ESSER 3 funds not to exceed $25,000. We have a donation acceptance for a portable batting cage for the high school uh, valued at $4,000. And then we have uh, items for disposal for the middle school. There's 75 world history textbooks that were obsolete, no longer part of the curriculum that we're recommending for disposal. All right, thank you, Mr. Pauling. Uh, Mr. Think... Moore, excuse me for one second. There was a question from Ms. Dunn, who was not able to be here tonight. She had sent it, sent it through to curriculum, and she was wondering why the middle school books were on the finance agenda as opposed to the curriculum committee meeting agenda. Maybe Mr. Pauling can speak to that just right. to answer the question. If, if you know Mr. Pauling. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just guessing without knowing past practice here, but usually surplus items go on the finance committee. When we have our board policies, we have the finance policies in the 600 series, the property policies in the 700 series. And the board policy is what dictates when we determine there's a, an item that needs to be disposed of in what manner. So um, normally my histor history at other districts has been it's normally placed on the finance committee because it falls under that policy realm that would normally go under finance for disposal of, of obsolete equipment, whether it's textbooks or equipment or other supplies. Excellent, thank you. So I can just let our colleague know that her question has been answered. Thank you. And Maybe it serves the public interest too to know that answer. Thank you. And and from what I saw for the detail of that disposal, it looks like that uh, that text is currently out of print and so uh, would no longer be used. And uh, Mr. Pauling, is it fair to say that that's typically how these disposals work? It's items that are no longer in physical condition to be used um, or are um, obsolete in other ways. Is that typically what we uh, should expect to see in the disposals part? Yeah, and again, that's in the board policy. So what we try to do is the administration is determine if the item has value. Um, and if it has value, we try a number of different methods, whether it's an online auction or if we do a, a, an open auction for people to submit paper bids, which is kind of an obsolete way to do things, but sometimes depending on the item and the audience we want to reach, we may do that. Um, but the board policy dictates that um, we find that those items, if they have value, we dispose of them through a sale process. If they don't have any value, then we would dispose of them. Or if we can find somebody to take them as a donation, we'll do that as well. But in this case, I don't believe because they are out of print uh, that there'd be anybody willing to, that we were able to find that would want to take those books off our hands. All right, other questions about the items under 4.02? Can I just clarify, is this the Wayne American Legion? Do, if we could just get, I've just never heard of the Wayne Legion. It's, is Wayne Legion is its own organization? Okay, nope, thank you then. Yeah, I would have to double check. I don't know off the top of my head, but. Oh, no, that'd be great, Nancy. Thank uh, you. I believe it is a baseball league. It's Legion League. So oh. it's the Wayne Legion Baseball League. Thank yeah. you, that clarifies it. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pauling, I did have one question about the Lakeside contract, and I apologize for not uh, raising this earlier, is something I noticed only upon rereading it just before this meeting. Sure. So 
Um, the way you presented it and the way I understood this was that it was adding a 40% FTE counselor. Um, it's not replacing what is already under paragraph 1.04, which is the services of three full time. In other words, we're going from three to 3.4. I just, because this was listed as an agreement addendum, and it says that the paragraphs are amended as follows. I wasn't sure if that amendment was meant to be replacing 1.04 or added to 1.04. And, um, and, and if that's something that you know now and, and, and uh, could further clarify with student services, just to make sure that we're clear on that before we vote on it at the regular business meeting, that'd be appreciated. And I do have the answer. It is in addendum, so it would be in addition to the, the three FTEs that we have in there. So we would have a 3.4 FTEs. So this language would get added to the existing language rather than replacing it. Thank you. So that will say effectively 3.04, a 3.4 FTE in the, on the original contract. Correct. Great, thanks. All right, seeing no other questions about what we'll see on our board agenda at the regular business meeting, uh, I'll turn it to Mr. Pauling to walk us through the first look medical rates. Great, thank you. I'm going to pull this up on the screen here. It's really one page of the document I want to focus on, um, and that's going to be um, what the district's experience is and how the district's rates are calculated as part of the consortium with all of the other schools in Delaware County. So I just want to take a minute or two to walk through um, that sheet, which is on page two of the, uh, the attachment that was provided. So what the IU does, we have a 50-50 split with the uh, IU as far as looking at our claims and looking at the IU's claims as a whole when we come up with our rate. So it's a blended 50-50 experience between the two. So the way that we calculate it for our experience is we look at claims that were calculated from October 2019 through September of 2020. We weight that to 30% of the past experience. And then we weight at 70% the claims that were incurred from October of 2020 through September of 2021. They get assigned a weighting factor on that 70-30 split, and it comes up with a blended cost of our per member per month cost. And then we factor in some other uh, items. You see there are some uh, Affordable Care Act fees um, and some other uh, fees that we pay as part of the consortium and it calculates a premium for us. So in this case, um, it would be $474.05, which is a per member per month cost um, for our, us to pay in the insurance. And then with the insurance plans, there's a portion that's paid for by the district and a portion that's paid for by the employees based on their um, uh, bargaining agreement and what that uh, 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 split is between the employer and the employee. So our current rate is $463.14. So just based on our claims alone, um, it's a 2.36% increase uh, when you look at those two blended rates. Um, the experience from the health trust is an increase of 0.44%. So and on the whole, um, the consortium had some higher claims at some of the other member districts. So the uh, consortium re increase rate would be 0.44. The 50-50 split based on the 2.3% of the district and the 0.44 of the uh, consortium comes to an average of 1.4%. What's gonna help us is we actually have more than our six months in reserves with the consortium. So we'll be able to realize a decrease because we have a surplus in our reserves, which takes that down by 3%. So the 1.4 over a 3% reduction gives us a decrease of 1.6%. So overall, this is good news for the district. So as I'm working on the budget over the next month or so, we're gonna factor in a decrease in our medical benefits. And again, this is a first look rate. We'll get a second look rate um, sometime in March. Uh, and this is just for medical. So we'll also get our dental and our prescription rates probably sometime after the new year. So I will be conservative and not put a full 1.6% decrease in the first look of the budget, not knowing what the RX and the dental are gonna look like. So I will factor in some kind of decrease, but it won't be a full 1.6% just to be conservative until we get more information as we go throughout the year. 
So overall, this is good news for us. It will, we'll see a decrease. And when we get the second look rates, it shouldn't be any worse than this. So we may see an additional amount based on what the current tr uh, claims are trending at. But overall, it's good news, and we'll be able to factor that into the budget for next year. All right, thank you. Uh, what questions do committee members or other board members have uh, about the first look rates? The only question I would have is, I mean, the decrease is great uh, for first, first look, and um, is there any, um, knowing we've been kind of still managing through COVID, do you think that that de decrease, um, and even, even the 2.3%, uh, percent doesn't, you know, seems to be reasonable. Do we anticipate that once we get out of COVID, like given that there may not have been that many claims or people going to get certain procedures over the last, you know, two years, do, do you envision that we may see an uptick in that um, in a year or two? I think we might see a slight uptick, but I, I think as we're starting to come out of COVID compared to where we were last year, um, people that had maybe put off some elective surgeries or, or things like that that they didn't go to the doctor for. We're starting to see that, which would be factored into those current rates and those claims paid through September of 2021. Right. So I don't anticipate a big jump. And Gallagher, who is the consultant for the, the trust, has factored some of that in as well, knowing that overall we would anticipate some people that may have put off some visits to go back in. But I think we're not going to see a spike um, or anything that's gonna create a huge difference. And some of that has already been factored in based on, on what we've seen already with people going back when it, it dipped after COVID and then it slowly started to tick back up. Yeah, that's great. Cause I, my, the dates and looking at the dates, I was kind of like, oh, we're in the middle of COVID during mm -hmm. these time frames. So I just wouldn't, I would want it to be smoothed out so that we're not caught off guard like in, in two years from now like with a dramatic increase. And I think that's one of the advantages of being in the, the trust as well is that being part of the consortium, it does help with some of that smoothing so that if we do see some of the spikes, it's not like if we were self-insured and paying our own claims out of pocket directly that we'd see that fluctuation. Being in the consortium helps to smooth those costs out. Right. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. So uh, you actually just kind of answered one piece of this question to, for me, picking up on Nancy. So the two periods that are here on the paper. So first of all, thank you for bringing this because we've anecdotally I've always received the kind of the status of first look and second look medical rates, but I've actually never seen the projection sheet before. So this is really helpful. So what it looks to me is that they do take two different one year time periods, weight them differently. And that's where you're going to, that's kind of helps smooth out the aberrations of one particular year, one way or the other. You're right. Yeah. Okay. And then they take that and, and blend it. I'm assuming that for 1251, is a 70, is that a 70, 30? I didn't do the math of it. Is that a 70, 30 split of the 40904 and the 420 or is it just split down the middle? I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're going to help kind of even out. Cause I had asked the same thing, um, Nancy last week of Brian. I was like, you know, are we going to expect an uptick in, in, uh, elective surgeries and things like that? But this approach is going to help to, to smooth even that phenomenon out uh, somewhat. Yeah. Okay. Then the only other question I have is this a stop loss claim. Is that the additional insurance we carry for when we have a medical event that is exceeds, you I know, believe, is it 200 or 300,000, 300,000. So yeah, it's additional insurance that the trust has that if there's any high cost claimant that goes over that amount, that insurance kicks in and then we get money back on that. Yep. Okay. So that's the, cl that's the insurance basically we paid for that ex ex extraordinary medical event. Correct. Okay, yeah, it's, it's extra you. protection if we do, and, and there were a number um, at other districts that, that uh, triggered that, sure. um, that it helps protect us. So we pay a premium for that, but if it does trigger, oh, it definitely uh, helps to save us. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Okay, and I mean, just to be clear, it's not that we actually saw a decrease in medical, it's just that it's not as large an increase so that our reserve is making up the difference. Absolutely correct, yeah. Okay, all right, great, thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? All right, seeing none, that will conclude the finance portion of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Pauling, for the efficient. Appreciate that. Okay, so now for the um, Finance Committee agenda items, I'm going to turn this uh, meeting over to Ms. Monahan, the Vice Chair for Facilities. Ms. Uh, Dunn was not able to be with us tonight. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Ms. Stern. Um, 
before getting into the agenda items, um, I'll defer to Mr. Dolan for any opening administrative remarks. Thank you. Uh, for administrative remarks, I just want to, well, I want to do an introduction that we had again from Fidavia Construction Management. We have Kelby English with us tonight. And I will uh, ask Kelby to help me with a little update on our f accessibility and wellness project. J not not a, just a few pictures in the, okay, in the way of administrative remarks, but it might, it might be more concise if we do approval of minutes first and then we'll jump into that because it reflects um, the change order. My, my apologies, it just dawned on me that Ms. Dunn and Ms. Solomon were not able to be here. It just, it was only the two of you, that's why I just said, oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong that you did, I was just like, oh, it's only two tonight, got it. Okay, um, moving on to agenda item 5.01, approval of the facilities committee meeting minutes. Does anyone from the committee have any comments? Uh, I'm looking around, okay. And Ms. Goldman? <laughs> oh, we are miss. Oh, Liz. Yeah. Oh. That's why I just said, oh. Yeah. oh I'm happy to stand in, but I, yeah. I'm not on this one. If you're good with the minutes. We're good with it. I'm, you're, I'm you're good the with key it. Person. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, with that said, the meeting minutes have been approved. Thank you. Uh, moving on to agenda item 5.02, and I'll defer to Mr. Dolan to provide background to this as well as an update on the accessibility and wellness project. Just to um, make a couple of comments, uh, on the agenda are some change orders that have already been approved per the um, authorization to approve change orders uh, with the superintendent in the amount of 10,000 and the superintendent board president and facilities chair in the amount of 20,000. These um, that Mr. Dolan will be reviewing in more detail have already been approved and it will be ratified or moved forward to the regular business meeting for the board to ratify. So Mr. Dolan. Thank you, Mrs. Monahan. That's exactly correct. I thought in, um, to frame out some of those change orders, it might be nice to, before we talk about the money, to look at a few pretty pictures since we have Kelby with us. He can, um, give us a quick overview of what's been going on in the last three, three and a half weeks since we last met. Kelby, I'm gonna bring up a few pictures of the ramps and you can give us a little sense of what's been going on there. So this, this can everyone hear me? This photo is from uh, the past week or so. Uh, we are working on, as you see there, more of the switchbacks. Uh, where are we at with the switchback? If you're looking at the switchback from the field. I refer, refer to them as the field house side and the bleacher side. Field house side is done. All the walls are poured. We are in the process of stone grading and getting ready for, well, the walls are done, getting ready for sidewalks. If you're looking at the bleacher side, the lower wall is 100% done. The middle wall is just about done. We're ready to return it up into what will be the bleacher wall itself. And then the that wall split, so the middle wall, upper, and the upper wall are coming along. What you see there is the upper middle wall as far as it is, and then they're currently digging out the footer for the upper, the next portion of the upper wall, which we actually poured that wall today. So those forms will be stripped in the coming days, waterproof, dam-proof, and more backfilling. Kelby can't wait until we come up with real names for these areas. I'm doing my best. That'll be part of wayfinding when we're all done. Exactly. Um, what you see here is, um, we'll start with the top left photo. That is, if you're standing on the ticket booth plaza looking down towards Anki Field where their bleachers will be, the, as you see, the ramp there is stone graded. Um, that's actually the bottom two photos as well, just different angles. At the bottom of the ramp, we have the pads poured for the bleacher ramp and stairs, and we started bleacher installation today. Mm -hmm. So it's... They're gonna. They're from New York, so I think they're gonna try to get it all done today, if not the of this week, if not the bulk of it this week. And then the top right photo is a photo from the Sky Bridge itself, just looking at the ticket booth plaza, going down the ramp. We actually poured the footer for the ticket booth today as well, so the Masons will start on that either tomorrow or uh, Thursday. And I want to just comment on that as 
the group from New York is installing the bleachers right now. We had to kick them out because the girls' varsity soccer team is playing a uh, PA uh, first round, I think. It's a first round championship states right now on that field as the bleachers are going in. You're yep. not allowed to sit in them yet. But it, and um, I hope I'm not jinxing it, but we're up 2-1 with 10 minutes to go. <laughs> Yes, they wanted to work till six tonight, but that was when game started. So we kicked them out at five so the girls could warm up and we not be a distraction. I thought that was a home field advantage, but <laughs> Bill and Mike Field uh, disagreed with me. <laughs> and we can watch that game next year from up here. Next right? year, you'll be standing on that uh, plaza. That is, you are standing on the. T um, you walked all the way to the back corner to take that photo, didn't you? I don't know where this came from. That is from the back corner. So you were actually standing right at the top of the stairs if you're on, that are all the way on the 30 side of the building. So that is the open space with the exception of the mechanical room, which you're, is kind of right to your left there, and the center wall and the two bathrooms on the far end, that is completely open. And we actually have poured the first layer of concrete there with the waterproofing system to go in late next week, early the following week. So hopefully by the next meeting, we are working on the top course of pavement there. And just more of the same there, just to kind of capture the view of Anki Field and the uh, ramp, the, the walls and the ramps going down to it there. And I just want to highlight as you as you look down towards the the painted building in the corner, that's where these uh, bleachers are being installed right now. Okay. That I took today at one. As you see, they have the center, the bottom support beam with the bleachers in, and they have the first couple. Um, support beams that where the benches and the stairs are they have about 50 percent of those in today when they left at five the concrete seats are going away Con they're gone they are. <laughs> they are long gone they were gone back in uh may and you get these nice shiny aluminum ones now if you're nostalgic there's plenty of concrete to sit on plenty of this concrete is all done but you in don't fact, have to um the rest you know you kind of see at the bottom of the center of the screen there that's what we're calling the anky seating wall it's a about a foot and a half wall off the ground that will have a paved walkway in front of it. They most of it's poured, but they poured the rest of it today, so they'll remove those forms in the coming day. Backfill for the whole uh, decorative grass area. So I'll be if you really want to sit on the concrete, you can still sit there. Uh, what you see here on the left is uh, some. Uh, gentlemen there, some architects, and I guess myself, I'm hi hiding in that, where we're reviewing the brick mock-up for the building. As you see, there are two shades of mortar that were selected there, one on the larger portion on the left side and one on the right side. We selected the portion on the left side because it was a very good match of the existing building, and the Masons have started brick on the field house. Now they're just going up you know, five courses all the way around because there's still some nitpicky with the brick mock-up we want to get right, but those courses will be underground. And so, so we're, we're going to start seeing the brick going up on that building before you know it. So architects approved this, and, and it'll be on this facade down in, down in here. We've actually uh, put our air and vapor barrier on the field house and sprayed it with spray foam insulation last week. So we're, you know, like I said, we're just going the first couple courses around, but it's already looking great. The Masons are taking good care there. Okay. What you see out here is uh, the tree planting that Roadcon did along the trail. We met with them and decided that they could plant a couple of their trees out on one of the, our new plateaus that we built out in Creek Field. And I unfortunately didn't get the photos to build in time yesterday, but they rock hounded and seeded that hill yesterday and mulched it today, and it looks great. From a distance, like you look at it from the distance, it looked like one continuous hill. And you get there and you see the break with the valley. The We built the dirt up around the manhole that was there, so it's not a hazard to anyone who might want to run or roll or sled down that hill, but it's still accessible for aqua if they would need it. And you know, like I said, we seeded it yesterday, hoping for the weather to continue so we get some good germination before winter. Thanks, Kelby. Yeah, and it's exciting. I was going to say, and it's tied in really well with the trail. I really, you know, for something I we weren't sure how it would envision, and the the, the location, the planting of the trees. Thank you. Um, I can see that providing future shade. 
uh, and opportunities to be watching games. So it's great. It, it looks great. I'm, I can't wait to see seed on it and the uh, grass on it in the spring. And it, it's it's nice that in a walk uh, to verify the locations of the planting of the trees, the township arborist and then our representative, Hugh Cadzo, who you know from ELA, both came up at the same time and said, is there any way we can push these trees out off the trail onto this new plateau? They'd be great there. And everybody agreed that that would be the way to go and there wasn't an issue. So we'll thank the township for that idea as well and the support of that. And once the grass is growing and the conservation district and the township uh, give us permission that it's stabilized, we'll move the silt sock below, dress that area up and seed where the silt sock was. And, and I do also want to note that these are some of the large caliper trees that you know, we uh, negotiated in the beginning. Okay. And this is our last picture. Yes. And our best uh, picture. I guess that was last week, wasn't it, Allison? Yes. We uh, took, were able to sneak the homecoming court onto site for some photos. Um, the contractors were willing to work around us, and I've got plenty of great photos there. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to Allison. She has, she has all of them. But they were very happy to uh, get out there, one of the few students to get out there, and they all got to keep the hard hats as well. So. Oh, that's Kelby, thank you for doing that because that was a very last minute request and your job first and foremost is to keep the project moving and keep things safe and you were able to work with our principal and um, yearbook crew and Allison and, and make that happen for the students, so that was great. And the hard hats have the Radnor Town uh, School District logo and take the ramp oh, underneath it. Nice. I, uh, I was told that means a lot to the senior class. And if you look very closely in the background over the young lady there on the right, you can see the concrete poured on that deck because we did that. That finished about 10 minutes before we took that photo. Multitasking. Mm -hmm. Kelby, thank you very much. Absolutely. That was great. So that was a little update th that brings us to our agenda item. All right. And our agenda item is that uh, we're requesting that the Accessibility and Wellness Project ratification of change orders be moved to the board for approval at next Tuesday's November 16th meeting, uh, regular business meeting. We have reviewed in the past week six change orders. I'm going to let Kelby again help us out a little bit with this, but six change orders that, as, as Nancy had mentioned, fall into that category of either level one or level two can be approved by superintendent or superintendent board chair and facilities chair. So these have all gone through that process and uh, would be up for ratification. Um, what I would like to do then is just jump to, because I think the next natural question is going to be, um, what, where does that come from when we approve change orders? So I wanna go over our contingency and also our allowances and ask Kelby to describe the difference between the two. And then I'll jump back to that list again, that list of six. So. As we talk, talked before, uh, I know it's a small screen, there are five, uh, six columns on that, um, no, five, yeah, six columns. Six columns on that, I can count, um, of, um, so you have the, uh, all the, thank you. One, the one, first, couldn't remember the first column, it's the dates. Second column is the GC allowances. The project had a little over 320,000 allowances. Um, now remember, allowances are already built into the contract. They are for set unit price work and change orders that are similar to the work or at the end of the project, if we have them, they either come back or we can use them for other smaller change orders. So the GC allowances have been the only one we've used so far. Uh, we started out with 320,000. We are uh, just above 206,000. As you see there, it was a big hit this month. That, in, that was due to, we had to undercut our basin by a few inches to add more stone to ensure that one, we had the structural uh, capacity to hold up the basin and the field above it, but to improve the percolation of the system at all. So it will work as designed, if not better. Kelby, you're talking about the stormwater basin yes. that's underneath the football field. Yes. Um, that we were able to start excavating as soon as the the, the mound of soil was re relocated, mm -hmm. okay. And we're all excavated for that. Um, that number included some extra fabric. Fabric will be arriving on site tomorrow and we will start that work tomorrow. Okay. 
and they're, they aren't, they aren't going to undercut areas where they can't close up just so we don't run into an issue again with water sitting in the basin. Okay. The mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, we have used none of their allowances. They have been good, you know, no, nothing extra on there to report. Uh, the contingency fund, that was, um, as a reminder, the contingency fund was a number approved by the board at the beginning of the project for change orders to come out to. And our goal is to not exceed that starting number of uh, a little over 1.6 million. Uh, we started the project with some value engineering credits back into the project, which is why you see the first number in parentheses there. Uh, July, I don't like to talk about July too much, but we had those two big change orders with the soil and water line work. Um, August, we had a few housekeeping small ones that we were approved back then. Uh, last month, we didn't have any to bring to the uh, board. Uh, this month, we have the, the six that Bill mentioned, Mr. Dolan, at the $36,314. So the ones that we're going to talk about total that 36. And we still have just shy of a million dollars contingency after seven and a half months into the project, almost halfway. So we are tracking well. And Kelby, this is just back to that list of yes. change orders that we have approved this month. Um, we can very quickly, some of these by, by name aren't going to make much sense, but shifting of the bleacher system, that's not the Yankee bleachers that we just talked about, but the Prevo bleachers, the entire system has come over towards the loop side a little bit, mm. just by four feet, and that was to, as, as the ramps got um, figured out in, real, in the real world, we needed a little bit more space for a landing on one side, and this accommodated that at no cost. Before we moved it, it was almost you were coming down the steps, and there'd be a couple steps, you were going straight up the switchback. And the design team imagined that'd be quite problematic, not just for fans, but the band coming off, especially the, the, guy, the guys and girls carrying the drums or the large tubas, the okay. small area to transition wasn't. So we shifted everything four feet, and then I know it seems silly to do a change order for zero dollars, but it encapsulates that the contractor recognized the change, it is no change to them. That way they can't say, oh, well, we had to do, you, know, you already told us it was nothing, so. Okay. So uh, the next one, re this reflects all of the doors in the project. So this is doors that we needed to order now to be installed when we actually build the buildings out. Majority of these are inside the high school, not necessarily the field house. Um, we had spec'd out a maple door, which was standard and is standard these days. Our veneer of our existing building uh, in a walkthrough with the architects, uh, they felt it would be uh, to our advantage to stick with what we have right now, which is oak. It's a little more expensive. It's a little bit more durable. And the change order cost for that was a, a little over 2000 um, The window head capping, this refers to the field house. Once the shop drawings were done, for all of the mechanicals that go in the ceiling above the finished rooms inside the field house, we were shy a few inches. Uh, this is sprinkler systems, HVA systems, plumbing and electric. Um, and rather than shorten the windows, which we had already put on order, uh, the architects came up with a nice detail on the inside, kind of like a soffit similar to what we have in this room. Mm -hmm. And the carpentry work for that, uh, which is, I think this is reasonable, is a little over $2,500. So we've, been, we've uh, approved that to go forward. Uh, those were all under level one. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanna ask you to, Catch us up on the fire hydrant one? Yes. And then I'll jump to the next one. So as you all remember, the uh, eight-inch water line, we were told by Aqua over the summer that they don't own it. It's a private road, private line. They maintain the valves and operate them when needed, but the line itself was property of the own district. That's why we had the large change order to relocate the water line. During design, Aqua told us we needed, know we need to re relocate the existing hydrant that was on the road going back to the maintenance yard because that road shifted up. At that time, Aqua told us that's our line. We'll move the hydrant. We don't want the contractors doing anything with it. So as it was put on the plan, hydrant relocation by Aqua. Well, when all this came out, Aqua said, by the way, we don't own that hydrant either. So 
We knew that at the time of the large change order, but pricing up the hydrant was taking more time than everything else. And due to the time restraints to open up New High School Way, we wanted to make sure that works. That's why typically they'd be in this whole change order, everything with water line, but we split it out that time just so we could get the large one approved in time to work, do the work while we knew the hydrant was coming. The hydrant price has been reviewed by ELA and Breslin. Both have said it's a very generous, a very gr good price for the work they're doing. So a part of the work's underway. We're just waiting for the hydrant to come in because it's a special hydrant. It opens a different direction than your standard hydrant. And that, that's due to a township code and regulation? Township requirements. Okay. All right, and, and the old one can't be reused. And this is not just a fire hydrant, but also the work, mm -hmm. all the work to, New to extend it, the mm -hmm. piping, the connections, and everything involved. Yep. Okay. Uh, the next one, uh, these maintenance wells refer to some maintenance wells that um, are tapped in up to 40 feet down, I think, in the 45. hill. Yeah, in the hill of the maintenance yard. There may be eight or tw 10 of them up in that hill. Um, not showing up on our survey. They um, they monitored a groundwater level mm -hmm. in an area that old oil tanks had been removed from. Yes. Uh, we have documentation that the tanks are removed. We were required to put these monitoring wells in many years ago, and we have approval. Uh, we had approval to shut that down several years back, mm -hmm. and uh, but we were unaware that these two particular wells and when I say well, we're talking about, Kelby, I think it's a six-inch diameter six inch pipe that, that goes. just goes straight down into the water table so that it could be accessible for testing and monitoring. Two of those are in the way of us pushing into the hill, so they need to be um, filled mm -hmm. to a certain level and then cut off where, where they're in our way. Correct. And this is the cost to do that. Fil filled with what? It's like a slurry that's a cement. Do I have that right? It's a flowable fill with, um, oh, what's it? There's a chemical compound in it. I, yeah. Starts with a B, I, I can't remember. I want to say benzenite, but that doesn't sound right. Um, but it, it's, uh, we had, I had lengthy conversations close. via yeah. email with the DEP, the local representative. Yeah. Bill gave me two very large binders from his office to look through about these wells. And these two just happened to be right in the way where we have to put the wall. And so the method is to fill them all the way from the yeah. water table up, and then we'll remove what we need to as we're excavating that wall. That way it prevents any construction, dust, or debris from entering the water table. Yeah. I, think it, I think it's bentonite. I think you're close. And, and uh, yeah, it is. It's almost like a very, very slurry cement that it'll harden up once it seeks its level and fills up. And then uh, and the last one refers to the field house that we just saw some pictures of that's um, the construction of the field house has a flat roof above the viewing deck that's a large flat roof and we had in our initial specifications for a black colored epdm roof material um, our architects were out in the last few weeks and got a view of it as built from up on the senior lot roland hill level and felt like um, the view from up there, for one, y you can really see that roof from up there and that it would look uh, pretty bad in the black condition and recommended going to white. And then for other reasons, uh, we believe that the, a white roof will last a little bit longer, look better, and generate less heat on that um, shade structure in the hot months in the spring through the fall. So for all those reasons, it was recommended strongly that you know, we change the EPM material from the black material to the white material, and there's a cost associated with that. And the material is simply more expensive. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the change order updates. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions, Ms. Duffy? From the, no? Any other board members have any questions? Great. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. All righty. Well, thank you all. Uh, so do we have any new business at this time? No new business? All right. Uh, for, board, ooh, for board announcements, I'd just like to announce that next Tuesday, November 16th at 7 p.m., we will have our regular business meeting. That will be in the Radnorshire room at the Radnor Township Municipal Building at 301 Ivan Avenue. 
And at this time, I would entertain a motion and a second to adjourn. So moved. A motion from Ms. Uh, Goldman and a second from Ms. Duffy. All those in favor? And the motion passes seven to nothing. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.